you've brought up that you've discussed this on your own podcast and this is obviously a, a popular which is alcohol consumption now typically in a week because you talked about a couple days a week someone having a couple of drinks in a typical week there's uh about three days where he'll have you know six to eight drinks and then and really? then three days where we're talking about usually 12 to 18 drinks, right? Oh my goodness. Is there any side effects with that? Anything happening? Well, there's a name for it. It's called alcohol use disorder. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a name alone doesn't tell the whole story. Bert, listen, we love you. I, I've never met you in person, but the world loves you. Like, don't, you yeah. don't need it. <laughs> uh, um, no, but I think, it, so alcohol, you know, short list, pro-cancer, neurodegenerative, it's a poison, right? It's yeah. a poison. It works to make people, to shift people's conscious states because it's a poison. Yeah. Now it's true. There's some genetic variation depending on how much alcohol dehydrogenase, the enzyme that metabolizes alcohol, how much people make, you know, indeed some people have a greater tolerance or can handle things. Certain cultures, they make so little of alcohol dehydrogenase. They have one drink or half a drink. And it's like poison. They turn bright red and they feel sick. Like they don't feel good. Other cultures based on genetic variation, they can drink far more. Among humans, about 8% mm -hmm. have some genetic variant that leads to increases in dopamine when they drink alcohol. It's got to be. I had that. an ex-girlfriend like this who, you know, could just drink and have the best time. And the next day is just fine. It's like the Don Draper phenomenon. This, Remember in that show, like sounds, he would just yes. like, tie one on. He's like staggering back in the office. The next thing you know, he's just all ching. Yeah. You know, he's all dialed in. Now, of course, that's a TV show. Sure. But the character was representing something that about 8% of people have, which is that they drink alcohol and they don't just sober up quickly. It's exciting to them, the anticipation. It's not just the circumstances. The alcohol really does seem to trigger the dopamine circuit. Whereas yeah. for most people, it triggers other circuits primarily, mainly shutting down of the forebrain so that you're, you're kind of... Uh, uh, not as inhibited as would be the simplest yeah, way to put it. You're sure. not adjusting your rule sets. Yeah. This can be a problem. I think what we should do is image your brain and Bert's brain. Okay. And what you're going to see, but what you don't want to end up with is the Homer Simpson thing, right? With the little brain inside the big skull. Yeah. And that's essentially what alcohol does over oh time. And then what happens is people end up on repeat of the same five or 10 stories and circuits. You ever been around somebody who's been a long time drinker? Yeah. It just kind of become the old story over and over again. Yeah. Um, how early did Bert start drinking? How young? I don't know. I mean, I know he was uh, partying some in high school. In college, he was turned all the way up. So I'll, I'll say to be safe, probably like 17, 18. You know. Yeah, there is very good evidence that if kid starts drinking early, like 14, 15, mm -hmm. the probability of them becoming a severe alcoholic is extremely high, independent of... The, their genetics and independent of anything else. So how early people start drinking a lot. I don't know if he was drinking at that age. Okay. I really don't know. Let's hope not. I mean, really two drinks per week would be the cutoff. I'd, I'd love to see Bert go sober, completely sober uh -huh. and focus on other things. Not because I need to see that for my own, you know, feelings of yeah. self-worth and yeah. well-being and happiness, yeah. Yeah. but because I think obviously his neural circuits work incredibly well in yeah. the presence of alcohol. They probably work even better. And he does, in, this, in the, he does the thing that you, I don't even know if you knew this, but you mentioned like somebody drinks like this you know, you have to do certain things to offset. Exercise like, more. So he exercises actually a yeah. lot more than people yeah. would. Even would, on tour. Even on tour. Yeah. When he's home, even on tour, trainer with him on the road. I mean, he's running, he's lifting. Like, he's active. He's a physically active guy. Yeah. And even the morning after the 10 drinks, right. active. Yeah. And people will throw out things like, oh, you know, my grandmother had like a gimlet of vodka or a half a pint of whiskey and she lived yeah. to be a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. There are outliers, sure. but for most people who are drinking that much and carrying some extra weight, mm -hmm. they, you know, you're going to, they're going to die young. Now, how young? I don't know. I mean, if it, some people are more, have more vigor and they can yeah. go into their seventies and eighties, yeah. but it's generally not a pretty picture yeah. as you get out into your, you know, sixties, seventies, eighties, it's really not. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I didn't even attend the health classes in high school, let alone yeah. am I going to try and stand here and be like, I'm the health professor. You know, yeah. I actually didn't set out to tell people that alcohol is bad or, or that cannabis can be good or bad. That's how I feel about it, depending on the person in the context, or that nicotine can be good or bad, depending on how it's brought into the body and the context and the age of the person. I'm just trying to give people the knowledge so they can make decisions for themselves. I always say, you know, um, do, what you, do what you want, but know what you're doing. And I think it would be great if he would cut back. Also, he did sober October, so it's obvious that- He can do it. Did he fall off? No. Okay. So it's clear that he could do it. I think that people who drink a lot and are high performers, who then make an active decision for themselves to go sober, do an incredible, their work just flourishes. Yeah. Also, I will say this, I'm not in AA or